Uh, since the onset of the Russian invasion, roughly one third of Ukrainians have been forced from their homes. This is the largest human displacement crisis in the world today. According to a new UNHCR estimate, more than 7 million people remain internally displaced within Ukraine and more than 15 million people require immediate humanitarian assistance inside Ukraine. According to estimates, four point, more than 4.9 million Ukrainian refugees uh, are inside uh, the EU right now. Uh, at the beginning of the crisis, everyone was uh, referencing uh, the border crossing data, like how many people crossed into Poland, how many people uh, uh, crossed into Hungary. But uh, honestly, it's difficult, uh, difficult to uh, estimate the, the percentage of Ukrainians uh, that were just uh, guest workers commuting back and forth, and also those ones uh, uh, who continued uh, to other um, European countries inside uh, the Schengen area. On the map that you can see on the screen, uh, the refugee population corresponds with the size of the, the green circles. This is based uh, on estimates, not on border crossings. Uh, obviously, the most refugees are in Poland, 1.1 million. Uh, the second country is Germany with uh, 780,000. Germany is not a frontline country, obviously. Uh, the third one is the Czech Republic with 360,000 people. In Hungary, there are approximately 100, 120,000 refugees. In Romania, 90,000. And in Slovakia, 78,000. The refugees arriving from Ukraine are mostly children and uh, women and elderly people because Ukraine prohibited men aged 18 to 60 from leaving the country to make them available for uh, military conscription. I put this uh, map up for, uh, for two reasons. This is a map from Frontex, the European Border and Coastal Agency. The first is to so show the distribution of uh, internally displaced people, or IDPs, inside U Ukraine. As you can see, in the western region of the country, there are uh, more than 2 million IDPs. Obviously, this is the, the part of the country which is furthest from the war. At the same time, where the fighting is the most intense in the eastern region, we also have approximately 2 million people. In the central and north region of the, of the country, we have approximately 1.5 million people uh, in the north and 1.5 million uh, in the central uh, region. The second reason this map is important is because of the recent, uh, very recent trends in the refugee movement. Uh, during the first uh, week of June, almost uh, 18,000 more Ukrainians uh, left the EU and returned to Ukraine as opposed to those who left. And during the, the last week of May, this number was 40,000. So right now, um, there is more people uh, returning to Ukraine um, than are uh, leaving the country. This was also recently uh, confirmed by the Ukrainian National Railways uh, that noted that uh, the trains uh, coming uh, to Kiev from the western region to the country are usually 90, 95% full uh, or were full at the end of May and at the beginning of, uh, beginning of June. Uh, now I'm going to talk a bit about the European, uh, the EU's response uh, to, the uh, to the crisis. The European response to the refugee crisis was swift and decisive. Uh, the EU triggered the Temporary Protection Directive on the 4th of March, uh, which gives uh, temporary protection uh, for uh, all uh, people that have a legal uh, residence in Ukraine, so not just citizens. Uh, they have a residence permit for the entire duration of the protection, access to employment, uh, housing, social welfare, medical treatment, education. Um, but they don't have to go through the lengthy asylum process um, of, uh, of uh, European countries. Um, the only uh, uh, the directive uh, postulates that even though the Ukrainians entering the bloc can choose where they uh, register for the temporary protection directive, but once they registered uh, in one specific country, then uh, they have to stay in that country and they can only receive the benefits uh, in, uh, in that uh, specific country. At the beginning of June, uh, approximately 3.2 million uh, uh, Ukrainians have registered uh, for, uh, for the temporary protection uh, schemes of the 27 uh, uh, European uh, countries. 
Now moving on uh, uh, to Hungary specifically. Uh, it is very important to, uh, to note that uh, refugees are not only crossing directly from Ukraine, but also a significant number of people crossed into Hungary uh, from Romania. Uh, since the start of the invasion, uh, 1.2 million Ukrainian citizens and uh, legal residents uh, crossed into Hungary from Ukraine and from uh, Romania. But most of these people uh, didn't choose uh, to stay uh, in this country. As of, as of last week, uh, only uh, 24,000 uh, claims were submitted to the Hungarian authorities uh, for temporary protection. The actual number of uh, Ukrainian refugees in Hungary is higher, though. According to government estimates, it should be between 100,000 and 140,000 people uh, at the end of May. Uh, I have to stress again that since uh, since Hungary doesn't have border controls with uh, with Austria, Slovakia, and uh, Slovenia, it's difficult to to estimate how many people actually leave the country uh, after uh, after entering it from uh, from Ukraine uh, and Romania. Because of this trend that I just described, Hungary can. Uh, be identified not just as a front-like country, but also as a transit country uh, during this uh, refugee crisis, which means that most of the refugees in Hungary only require temporary help before they continue their journey to other uh, European country. The cornerstone of the Hungarian government's uh, response to the refugee crisis was that uh, they distributed uh, a large amounts of funds among uh, refugee NGOs, and they also took the role uh, to coordinate their activities so that, uh, the maxima so that to maximize the effic uh, efficiency of uh, these resources and to avoid duplications uh, of the efforts of, uh, of NGOs. On the, on the map that you can see on the screen, this is the Hungarian-Ukrainian border. Uh, we have five uh, border crossings, which now are um, operating 24-7. Uh, um, at, the, at the border, the Ukrainian refugees have 24-7 uh, access to medical care in temporary facilities. These facilities are equipped by mobile pharmacies uh, to provide medicine for chronic diseases. Uh, the bulk of the medicine comes from the National Healthcare Reserve, which is Hungary's uh, strategic stockpile uh, of medical supplies. With the refugee flow significantly abating, these uh, facilities uh, set up at the border, uh, also the tem temporary uh, shelters, right now are uh, mostly empty. Now I shortly would like to uh, touch on a very specific uh, issue, uh, uh, relating to Hungary, here you can see the the ethnic map of uh, of Ukraine, and uh, the little, very little uh, orange uh, spot uh, on the western part is the country is the Hungarian uh, ethnic minorities. Uh, here is the uh, another map enlarging uh, uh, the region. According to a 2017 um, estimate, there were around 150,000 uh, ethnic Hungarians uh, in the Transcarpathia region, the part, that, the part of Ukraine which is enlarged on the map. Already in uh, 2014, after the annexation of uh, uh, Crimea, there was a spike of uh, Hungarian emig uh, emigration. Uh, this, uh, after the start of the war, turned uh, into mass uh, exodus. There are some uh, Hungarian majority sub county uh, administrative units in the Transcarpathia region where up to 50% uh, of the population left and uh, moved into Hungary. While at the same time, uh, thousands and thousands of uh, Ukrainian IDPs are, are moving in. Um, to the region uh, to flee uh, the invasion and the war in the eastern part of the country. So this can be uh, described as a huge uh, uh, demographic shift in the region uh, that uh, the region itself hasn't seen uh, since the end uh, of uh, World War II. There is another issue uh, uh, that I would like to talk about. Uh, the, since the start of the war, the European Union, and specifically Poland and Hungary, have been accused of applying racist double standards to the treatment of uh, Middle Eastern and African refugees uh, at the border. Uh, this has been uh, widely uh, publicized uh, in the mainstream uh, uh, American press. Uh, these um, allegations, however, miss basic facts. 
uh, it is true that Ukrainian nationals can cross into the EU much easier than African nationals, but this is only because of simple administrative reasons. Since 2017, Ukrainians with a valid biometric passport can enter and stay in the Schengen area for 90 days without visa, uh, which significantly speeds up their admission as refugees into the EU. In contrast, nationals of third countries uh, when lacking a visa to the Schengen area, fleeing the age invasion, they have to go through a registration uh, process at the border, which usually includes an interview, national security screening, and the issuance of a temporary residence permit. The frustration of uh, African students uh, waiting at the EU border to be registered, watching uh, Caucasian Ukrainians wave through without a delay is understandable, but uh, it has nothing to do with racism. Uh, the above mentioned extra mechanisms ensure the protection of the external borders of the EU, and they are indispensable even during a refugee crisis. These mechanisms, however, are also in place uh, to protect third country nationals who are fleeing the conflict. Uh, at the beginning of the conflict, a large number of Ukrainian refugees didn't really need substantial help for the countries receiving them because they already had uh, friends and relatives uh, in the EU whom they could rely on. This was not the case, obviously, for uh, third country nationals fleeing the war. Upon entering the Schengen area, they usually found, them, find, found themselves in a vacuum, and it was during these registration mechanisms that they learned about their op options and, and could request a stay in the EU or ask for help to return home. During the first 10 days of the conflict, the e EU countries scrambled uh, to help evacuate 18,000 Indians, with Hungary alone assisting more than 6,000. Consequently, it's no surprise that uh, the Indian Prime Minister uh, thanked Budapest for its effort uh, to help Indian nationals uh, fleeing the war. Moreover, Hungary helped to accommodate Somali as well as Bangladeshi students, even offering them the chance to continue their studies at Hungarian universities. These actions are anything uh, but racist. Uh, what are the challenges uh, for the future? If the war uh, continues uh, uh, up until the winter, it could trigger a second wave of refugees. First of all, uh, Ukraine does not have enough natural gas or oil to last through the winter, uh, and even if it did, the damage to the country's civilian inf infrastructure is significant. For example, in Kharkiv, 80% of windows on residential buildings were shattered because of the widespread use of cluster munitions by the Russian army. Cluster munitions uh, detonate in the air and release a cluster of uh, smaller uh, bombs which fall incriminately uh, over a wide area, pot potentially putting uh, civilians uh, at risk. Obviously, uh, during the summer, um, broken windows are not a huge problem, but uh, during the winter in the eastern part of Ukraine, especially if you don't have proper heating or no heating at all, uh, all those people will have to find uh, refuge either in the western part of the country or inside uh, the European Union. With that, I would like to thank you for your attention and thank you for coming.